Being social creatures, we all draw inspiration from different sources. For Mickey Mouse, Walt Disney had a creation named Julian the Cat. And right here you can see an uncanny resemblance to Pat Sullivan's Felix the Cat. The two are in fact so similar that's a wonder that no one was sued, and just shows how difficult it was to protect property before copyright law. After copyright laws, using another person's work not only became subject to social scrutiny, but the practice also started to have legal implications. Take Shepard Fairey's iconic Hope poster. This image sent a powerful message that helped the Obama campaign. However, to make the poster, Fairey used an image from the Associated Press without permission. In order to defend his artwork, Fairey claims that he followed the fair use laws. However, the fair use laws are rather subjective. Anytime the law looks at what is fair use, they look at four factors. What was the purpose of the use in question? What was the nature of the source work? What is the amount of source work that was used? And what effects does this have on the potential market for the source work? Purpose is a rather easy factor to look at. If it's made for commercial use, it's not very fair to use. However, if you're using it for education, critical, or nonprofit purposes, suddenly you have more of a fair case. When looking at the nature of the source work, we're wondering if the work is creative or based on facts. In 2008, J.K. Rowling won a lawsuit against the lexicon of Harry Potter due to the fact that this unauthorized work was based on a creative piece. The third factor to consider is how much of the work was actually taken. Was it the majority of the piece? And did it make up the majority of the new work? If it was, it's not very fair. And then finally, what are the effects this new work has on the source works market? Is it going to compete and make it harder to sell?